What's up Tech Junkies, my name is JD and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the necessary components you need in a computer for 2017. So maybe you're not too knowledgeable about what goes inside a computer or how to build one. And maybe you just want to learn about the components on a surface level, know which ones are used to actually build a, com a computer. So it might sound like there's a whole bunch of components and it looks very complicated and, and advanced. But the reality is there's only a few or a lot less than you're probably expecting. So it's a lot simpler than you probably think it is. So I'm gonna help you guys go over which components are necessary to be building a computer in 2017. We're gonna go over the necessary parts that you need and I'm gonna link up the list right over here. And this way you can see how we're indexing all the parts that you need. See, it's not so many. But we're gonna explain what these parts are and how they operate in the computer on a very surface level, of course. We're not gonna to go too in depth. That'll be for a video separately. So first, let's talk about the CPU, the central processing unit, also known as the processor. Basically, it's the brains of the computer, does all the calculations, uh, processes all the data at any given moment. So obviously, a better processor is gonna help your computer run faster and more smoothly. Of course, there are many th factors that go in with that, but the processor is predominantly big part of that. Next is the motherboard. Now this is probably one of the scariest looking things out of the entire uh, computer, out of all the computer parts, because it looks the most complicated. But essentially all it is is where it houses all the components, or at least where all the components are connected, hence why it's called the motherboard. All of the components have to be connected to the motherboard. There is nothing that isn't connected to the motherboard that isn't receiving power. Next is the CPU cooler or the CPU heatsink. What it is, is basically either a fan or a water block attached to the top of a CPU. You need one because it um, expels the heat off the CPU to keep it cool. Uh, those are necessary and you need one. You can either do it via air with a fan or via water with a water cooler. Next up is RAM random access memory. You can consider it as the short-term memory of your computer. So it's also referenced to as just memory. The memory that is being used at the current point in time. The applications that you have open, the programs that you have open, um, whatever tabs that you have open on your internet browser. Whatever is currently being used at the moment, it's kept there in the RAM so that the processor can access it quickly. So that's how it communicates between each other and it's a lot faster of a method. That's why when you turn off a computer and you turn it back on, you don't have programs that you once had were open are now no longer open. Next up is storage. So you need a storage device for your computer to, to save all your files, your programs, even your operating system is kept on here. There's two different kinds of devices. Well, technically three. You either have a hard drive, solid state drive, or a hybrid. Of course, you have external hard drives, but we're not really gonna focus on that. We're gonna focus on what's inside the computer itself. So um, you can go with either one, but this is essentially the long-term memory of the computer. Next up is the GPU, the graphics processing unit, or also known as the video card or graphics card. So what it does is it basically helps share the load that the CPU is using which is in specific towards um, visual display. So if it has to render images when you're playing a computer game, like if you're playing GTA 5, it needs to render those images on the spot. The CPU can't do all that at the current point in time. So the GPU does that, it splits the load and makes it responsible for anything visual happening. Also, even if you're building a computer that isn't uh, necessarily for gaming. It helps take the load off the CPU in multiple ways and helps the longevity and life of the CPU and helps share that load. Next up is the power supply unit, also known as the PSU for short. And basically it's what powers the computer. Sure, you can plug in the computer, but it needs some sort of amplifier to power all those parts inside. So that the power supply unit provides power to all the separate components inside the computer itself. Next up is the computer case. Now, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but some people who are unfamiliar with computers just consider the computer case as the whole entire computer. So the computer case might look like the entire computer, but it's not. It's just the housing where all the components are stored. Uh, it basically shields all the components from the outside elements, 
The computer case helps house all of these components together, protecting it essentially, and also various other functions. Now, the next is your operating system. Now, this isn't exactly a computer component as in hardware, but it is a component in the respect that it is a necessary piece of software that you need. The operating system is basically what your computer runs on um, or operates on, essentially. Um, examples, Windows, Mac, Linux. So you need one to actually use the computer and what it's actually used for. Otherwise, you can't. And lastly, of the essential items or the essential components that you need are case fans. Case fans are um, sometimes included with the case that you buy, but sometimes, but most of the time, people like to upgrade their case fans because they run quieter or run cooler. Uh, whatever advantages they may have to aftermarket case fans that aren't included with the case itself. These are additional fans that you place on the inside of the computer case to help push out the air and expel all the heat outside the case, keeping it cool on the inside. Now these are some optional components based on the type of case that you buy or the type of parts that you buy. So I'm going to go down this list and explain uh, why these are optional and what they exactly do. So the first is the optical drive, also known as the disc tray. So the disc tray is where you put DVDs, CDs in, or whenever you need to boot up some drivers for the components that you recently installed, you need the optical drive. So you don't exactly need that anymore because all that information can be replaced with just using a USB drive. Those have become kind of obsolete over the past couple of years, and they're not as uh, popular as now because most cases, most modern cases within the last couple of years have just totally abandoned the whole entire uh, installation of using an optical drive. Wi-Fi adapter. Now this depends on what kind of motherboard you're buying, if the motherboard has Wi-Fi capabilities built into it or not. Um, some of them do and some of them don't, so this isn't exactly a necessary component. Also, if you have direct connection, also known as Ethernet, to the internet, um, you won't need a Wi-Fi card and you won't need a separate card for the Ethernet because all motherboards come included with an Ethernet uh, port. Lastly is the sound card, which is a card that plugs into the motherboard separately for its own purpose for its audio capabilities. Um, the motherboard is a open circuit, so there's static frequencies that can interfere with the uh, audio quality coming out from your computer. Um, so the sound card is a designated card to increase the quality of your audio output. Most motherboards have built-in features uh, to block that static electricity around the audio output, and now you can just get audio right out of the mo motherboard without any interference or anything like that. So those aren't really necessary. So those are all the components that you need for a computer and what they essentially do on a surface level. We can go much further in depth to which each component does and what they contain, which I'll save for videos later on. But if you're just getting into building a computer, this is a great way to get started just to familiarize yourself with knowing the parts. If you want to get yourself more familiar with the parts that you need, um, you can go over to PC Part Picker and it will list out all the different parts that you need and which ones are compatible with what you're doing. Now if, you, if you're afraid to know which are compatible and which aren't, PC Part Picker will help you with all of that. But if you want to learn more specifically about parts before you go out and start buying things, there will be more videos with in-depth descriptions of what each of these components do, explaining what they do, and what to specifically look for in each of these components when buying them. This is just basically to get yourself familiar with what we're actually doing when you're building a computer. So I hope that helps. If you want to see more videos like this and you want to learn more about computers and how to build them, I'll be uploading those kind of videos on my channel. If you want to see more tech, reviews, unboxings, setup, design, personalization, and creation, and everything in between, then consider subscribing and also like the video if you enjoyed it. That really helps me out, guys. So hope this helps. Let me know if it does. And also let me know if you're building a computer yourself this year for the year of 2017 and which parts you're thinking about buying. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comment section down below and I will catch you guys next time. So thanks, guys.